In this video shall demonstrate the interaction with the Scatterblocks 2 system for training microblock filters as well as exploiting them in real-time monitoring. Due to the infrequency of noteworthy events, we want to showcase the system on pre-recorded streams of two events in a replay mode. The first case study is focused on the creation of microblock filters and is set in the 2012-2013 flu season of the USA East Coast. We have collected one week of geolocated Twitter messages during the flu outbreak and have loaded this dataset in the query widening and keyword filter creation utility. Starting with a few basic flu-related terms like flu, fever and headache, the system separates the message set into relevant and irrelevant messages, calculates the term frequency in these sets and puts them in relation to each other, similar to term frequency inverse document frequency measures. The result is presented as a list of prominent terms, potentially also describing the set of relevant messages. Browsing over the list, we can easily identify interesting symptom or medication-related terms such as shot, stomach, symptoms, throat, coughing and outbreak that we might have missed otherwise. We collect most of these terms and add them to the filter definition, but restrict shot to only count in combination with flu, which is already suggested by the system in the list of high-ranked co-occurrences. In order to judge the current filter definition, we can test it against the collected messages, preview the result and store the keyword and co-occurrence list together with their metric weights. Based on the same corpus of Twitter messages, we now train a SVM classifier to identify flu-related messages. The classifier training can be bootstrapped by the previously identified relevant query terms fever, flu, outbreak, headache, throat and coughing. The bootstrapping searches the most relevant 50 documents related to these terms and uses them as, as positive training instances. Additionally, 50 random documents are taken as negative examples. This automatic step should be inspected. Therefore, we set the filter to show only labeled messages and quickly browse over the message contents in the selection list. For the further refinement of the classifier, we invert the filter definition to show only uncertain messages, as these have the highest potential to influence the classifier's configuration. We select messages and assign labels to the most obvious examples and then retrain the classifier. After inspecting some of the classified messages, we find that the classifier detects them correctly. In order to further improve the classifier, we do several iterations of self-training, inspect the result again and store the resulting classifier for exploitation during monitoring. In the live monitoring system, every new message that complies with the current filter creates a new dot on the map and contributes to the timeline histogram. We load the previously created classifier into the filter orchestration view, where it filters the whole incoming Twitter stream down to a few messages. By attaching a tag to the filter, we can color each passing message with an icon and color and immediately see the distribution of flu-related messages in the New York City area. Additionally, a new panel on the right-hand side appears that informs us about the frequency of these tagged messages. 
clicking on a cluster of tagged messages shows their content in a table at the bottom of the screen. Here we find one unrelated message, which tells us that the filter is not focused enough. Adjusting the threshold, which shifts the decision boundary of the classifier, successfully removes this false positive. The second use case highlights the exploitation of created filters on the 26th of November during the 2012 British Isles severe weather season. We previously trained a classifier to identify flood-related messages on a collection of flooding events that took place in June 2012 and use it as a filter while monitoring related situations in November. Around quarter past one, the flood classifier detects first messages related to the flood. It seems that the government issued flood warnings were successfully disseminated and discussed by the public. Increasing the filter's threshold omits mere repetitions of warnings and reveals a first indication of actual weather impact appearing at Rathdrum near Dublin. Because of the high amount of messages already detectable, the operator continues with two instances of the classifier, one with a strict threshold for high-profile messages and one for monitoring the overall trend. Around quarter past six, a local resident in Richmond reports that river banks have broken. This is the second message detected by the high threshold classifier. Also, more and more messages of a traffic information service begin to appear within the detected messages. As such messages will mostly convey information already known to surveillance operators, we can hide them at talk with a keyword filter on the words that are used by the service and subtract the result from the flood classifier filter. Although unrelated to the flood, we can also find a fire near Birmingham caused by an explosion at a distillery, since we also added some default filters for emergency management. Several eyewitnesses talk about the incident and report on its severeness.